Hello, this is Mystic Rider, and welcome to another episode of Coaster Factory Reviews, a series where we look at roller coasters, rides, and attractions. Now, for this episode, we are continuing our Year of the Giga reviews with, with Red Force, the tallest and fastest coaster in Europe. Red Force is often a controversial coaster because a lot of people don't count, are arguing whether or not it's actually a, should be considered a Giga coaster. Partially because of, there, for a few reasons. One is its launch because it's so much like, like um, Top of the Dragster and King of Call. It's different than other Gigas, but yeah, so to the point where that a lot of people don't even consider it a Giga. I don't even, although I've heard, I don't know 100% sure if it is true, leave it down in the comments if it is, but I, 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 from what I've heard, it's not counted in the R RCD, on RCDB as a Giga Coaster, but from what I've seen in multiple sources, a Giga Coaster, like I said in a couple of other videos, a Giga Coaster is any coaster between 300 and 399 foot in height. So, technically, with a height of 367 foot, it's still, if you're going by the height rule, it is still a Giga Coaster. So, that, so in my opinion, I say it is a Giga, and that's why it's counted in this lit, counted as our, in our Year of the Giga reviews. The, now, this coaster is, like I said, it's like Dragster, Top Show Dragster at King's Island. At Cedar, uh, sorry, at Cedar Point, and the the it was so it's tall, but it's really tall, but not that long of a ride or co or terms of track length either. It's like I said, 367 foot tall. It has a 344 foot drop, and has a total length of 2,000 2,890 foot, so it's not even, it's not even a mile long, while most of the Gigas are either over or close to a mile long. The only one I can think of it that's not, that's, well, not over a mile is Fury 325, which is a, it's still a decent, a decent sized coaster, but it's just under a mile. It is under a mile long. It's like four, over 4,000 foot. I don't remember the exact length of it on the back of my head though so so don't get so don't so I don't want to ha have any gripes about saying something wrong and and get a lot of mean comments in review in the comments and so but this thing is and once again just like Dragster it has a 90 degree climb I'm in descent I know I'm comparing a lot to the, the top throw Dragster at Cedar Point but it is and came the call as well but it's, but that's essentially what it is. It's a smaller version of those two. Another difference is between Tata Dragster and this and Red Force is instead of a hydraulic launch, which basically has a little sled that, that you that the train connects to, and you get it pulled to the other side up to an incredibly fast speed through a steel cable that's being pulled by hydraulics. This thing has an LSM launch. The, the Red Force has an LSM launch, which stands for Linear Synchronized Motors, which basically ha uses magnetic fields to launch the coaster up to a high speed. This thing is pretty. This thing is pretty, pretty interesting. Another fun fact, just a quick fun fact before we get into the video, is the fact that the, what on opening day when when this thing first opened, a guy got hit in the got hit by a pigeon when they on the coaster. Yeah! Fabio's not the only one who has been hit by a bird on a coaster. Someone else, I don't know the guy's name who got hit on by the pit by the, who was hit by the pigeon on this thing, but again, Fabio's not the only one that has been hit by a bird while riding a coaster now. Well, I know people have made jokes about this, but it could have been worse. It could be like Fabio and getting hit by a goose. <laughs> So on that, well, on that little funny note, let's get into the video. The video is from Theme Park Review, and on that note, here we go. They got lap bars. 
Yeah, that was. Wow, yeah, well, that is a definitely an interesting coaster. A very interesting coaster. It, I would say it, it definitely it looks interesting. Arguably, it, it does look like it's better than top than top the dragster. But again, top the dragster's launch is just insane. It which makes up for the fact that it has a lack of it has a lot a, a very short length and it's not doesn't do that much. This thing, it, it I don't know. It, it's launched. Uh, it, I've heard it's launch is slower and as well as. Not as well, not as forceful, uh, and as well as not as big. So it, are, I still is arguing whether or not it's better than Top Thrill Dragster, but definitely is an interesting coaster when it comes to the other Gigas. It's not that tall, but it does, and not that long. It's it's tall, but not that long, and doesn't do that much. So I am kind of I have split opinions on how the coaster is. It, I mean, it looks cool. But it doesn't do much, so I mean, all you have is that big top hat and that surprising pop of air at the very in between the two brake runs, and so it. So I don't, I don't know how I would flat say if I were it's a good coaster or a bad coaster. It's definitely an interesting coaster. I'll just give you that. Again, being the tallest and fastest coaster in Europe, uh, while it would not even be, I think it would only be in the top. Not even, well, it would. I think it would only be like the top, the third, maybe fourth tallest and fastest coaster in the U.S. If it was built in the U.S. But it is, it is definitely something to check out. I don't know when I will ever get to Port Ventura. It's one of the parks I really want to get to because they got several class, several class A coasters at. Class A coasters there, but it's all the way in Spain. So it, with me being in the United States, it's gonna be really hard for me to get go over there, or at least within the foreseeable future. Eventually, I might end up getting over there if I ever get a chance to go to Europe. But if that again, that's gonna be uh, probably a while before that happens. And uh, on that note, uh, this has been the Mr. Grider, and I'll see you next time.